is the Greater Lagos Vision, and I'm your host, Love Ikuku Oyedoku. Governor Babajide Sawunlu is confident that 2022 and 2023 will be a harvest period for Lagos State, particularly in the area of infrastructural projects. He says the state government has fast-tracked the completion and delivery of key infrastructure, which includes a motorized mill, 27-kilometer blue line, and 32-kilometer red line ray projects. The governor was speaking at the opening session of the 17th Executive and Legislative Party organized for all elected public office holders in Lagos State. This is the Greater Lagos Vision. Welcome once again. I'm your host, Love Ikuku. This episode features Okada Ban, Lagos government crushes over 2,000 seized motorcycles, Collapse Ikoyi Building, Lagos government commences demolition, details shortly. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu says the ultimate goal of his administration remains that Lagos State becomes one of the top places in the African continent to live, work and invest. Sawunlu was speaking at the official commissioning and handing over of the reconstructed State Security Service building in Alimosha local government area of the state. The impact that it's going to have in this area is to give more security to the people of Alimo local government. And because Alimo local government is the largest local government in the Federation, they have more population than any local government in the Federation. And we, the, we secure the approval of the governor for the construction of this so that they can provide more security network architecture in this local government. And I want to advise the youth to be calm to so, not uh, do anything that warrant the security agents to go after them. The sort of passion the governor of Lagos State attached to security prompted the award of this particular project. So if they were at, without security, we would not be anywhere. It is when there is security you have this combined. It is when there is peace of mind you think about what and what will I do for the benefit. I want to appreciate our governor for doing that. The Lagos State Government has commenced the demolition of adjoining structures within the complex of the collapsed 21 story building at Gerard Road in Ikoyi. Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Benga Omotosho, stated this at a press briefing. The briefing commenced with a minute of silence observed in honor of those who lost their lives in the unfortunate incident. Top on the agenda was the deconstruction of the two remaining buildings still standing at the premises of the collapsed 21-story building. Commissioner for Information, Benga Omotosho, accompanied by his counterparts in the Ministries of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Relations, Tayo Bangboshi Martins, and that of Physical Planning and Urban Development, Idris Salako, told journalists that the construction will commence on the buildings having failed integrity tests. We are here because of the November 1 incident. Lagos does not pray to ever have that kind of an incident again. We are here to the fulfillment of what the panel that was set up after the collapse of that building, what it recommended that the government of Lagos should do, that those other buildings that are still standing on that site should be brought down because according to experts, they have failed what they call the integrity test. A motor show announced that a stakeholders meeting had previously been held in this regard and all formalities have been completed to hand the complex over to the contractor for the deconstruction. The Commissioner for Fiscal Planning explained that the land would be taken over by government in line with the state fiscal planning law. The development law 2019 has amended Section 74 to be precise. Any property that collapses in Lagos State is automatically forfeited to the Lagos State government. So 
the property as, as it is, is forfeited. The contractor handling the deconstruction Theophilus Lewo had laid fees about safety of workers, saying control methods have been worked out. We will tie up the slabs first. What does that mean? If we want to cut a section of a slab, maybe one meter by one meter, we will put steel chains through that slab in about four to six points, such that such that it is hooked up, it holds the slab, it sort of suspends the slab, even though we haven't cut it. We will then begin to cut, so that by the time you are cutting, those steel chains have already held up the piece you are cutting, so and it doesn't drop. He said the deconstruction is expected to take 90 days, but could be extended due to bad weather. About 2,000 motorcycles have been crushed in the first quarter of the year 2022, so says the Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Benga Omotosho. At the crushing site in Alausa, he said the crushing of the bikes showed how serious the government is in enforcing commercial motorcycle ban in some areas of the state. motorcycles, also known as Okadas, being crushed by the Lagos state government. It goes to show the seriousness that the state government attaches to ensuring that the state is rid of Okadas and his menace. Commissioner for Information, Gwenga Omotosho, and Transport Commissioner, Dr. Frederick Oladende, walked journalists through the crushing site to witness the destruction of the motorbikes. People have been wondering what We've been doing with the Okadas that have been taken out of a town. So for you to see what we have been doing with them, this is why we invited you here today. I'm happy you have seen the way they have been crushed. Mr. Omotosho says that the government had to take the enforcement seriously due to the excesses of the riders and the alarming rate of road accidents recorded this year alone. In the first four months of this year, we had 1,712 Okada accidents. Of these, seven hundred uh, of road accidents, of the 1,712, 767 were due to Okada. A motor show, however, called on riders securing to the state or promoting transport schemes to get actively engaged. Commissioner for Transportation, Frederick Oladende, urged residents to remain calm and obey traffic laws as alternative means of transportation have been provided. We're putting more high-capacity buses uh, on the road. Um, the government is working around the clock to make sure that our rail system is, uh, is working. We've increased the number of boats on our waterways and they should just be calm and then uh, move about their daily uh, business. Chairman of Lagos State Tax Force says there is no going back on the enforcement we don't see Okadas on the road, on the express any longer. The number has drastically reduced. But I know for sure, and I'm passing this information to them because they, they are watching us. They might be of the belief that the first one week of the enforcement will be thorough. After one week, we are going to relax. Anyway, we will, we will watch and see. But I'm passing this uh, message to them that from next week, we will do more intense enforcement. With the recent pronouncement and the continued enforcement on the ban, Legosian's hope is not short-lived so that the sanity is sustained. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu has declared that his government's commitment to providing quality and affordable education of the state is second to none. Sawolu was speaking during the launch of the collaboration between Lagos State University and Cornell University, New York, United States, for postgraduate professional certificate programs. The governor said his administration would do everything possible to uphold the outstanding reputation of the state owned Lagos State University Lasso and make it one of the best 10 best universities in the world. Joining me shortly on this episode of the Greater Lagos Vision is the Commissioner for Education, Folashade Adefisayo. 
She will be giving us more insight into how the present administration is changing the narratives in the educational sector. But that's going to be after this break. Please stay with us. Honorable Commissioner for Education, glad to have you on the program today. Thank you for inviting me. I'm really excited. Right, we all know that uh, the first leg of uh, Mr. Governor's tenure is uh, winding up just uh, in a matter of months from now. That is uh, something that we are all uh, aware of. But Ma, I would like to know from you, uh, would you say that uh, his uh, promise of ensuring quality and affordable education that is second to none to Lagosians, would you say he has uh, fulfilled it or he has lived up to that promise? You remember when Mr. Babajide Lushalasan Wulu came in, he espoused his themes agenda. The first E there was education and technology. And he promised that year in, year out, he would increase the education budget, which he has done without fail. Every year, the budget grows larger. And every year, he has concentrated on improving the quality of education in the state. He promised that he would attend to all abandoned structures, so there would be no more abandoned structures in the, in the schools, that he would furnish the schools with adequate furniture and a lot of other promises. And he would integrate technology into, into teaching and uh, learning. All these promises have been met to a large degree. And I think I would like to let you know that, um, especially in terms of improving education, making classrooms conducive for learning, and when they're conducive for learning, you can then now start working on the other soft skills you need to work on. So I would say that we really have gone far. When Mr. Governor first came in, we concentrated our attention on completion of abandoned projects. And we've done a lot of that across the state, right from, in fact, across the six districts in the state. Then we concentrated on improving uh, model school infrastructure by building uh, state-of-the-art uh, boarding houses, complete with um, laundry room, reading room, and so on for, for, for students in our boarding uh, schools. After that, we now decided that look, it's time for us to now build specific iconic structures that will be for, I mean, for A, if, when people are passing by, they say, ah, this one was built by Mr. Governor. So um, there are about three that I would like to mention. The first one is the Elemoro School, which is uh, in Ibejuleki. Ibejuleki is an area where we have very few schools. So when we sat down with the Oba, and we saw that about 12 schools didn't really have a good basic school. You know, it, it, it's a new area of Lagos. So, so we started this brand new, it's a brand new school. And uh, in this school, the Elemoro School, we built um, track and field. We built a um, uh, stadium for, for, and, and sitting for um, spectators. Uh, so it's, it's a very, very exciting structure. We're very pleased with it. All the issues we had with our existing buildings, we tried to correct there. Like now there's, um, when you entered the school before, there was no reception. Now there's a reception so that we are able to attend to parents. They should sit, just, just don't enter school and uh, a lot of things like that. We, we included labs, we included uh, all the structures that they would need to be able to uh, um, operate effectively. That was at um, Ibejuleki. Now we are coming up with another building which is yet to be commissioned. Uh, the Ibejuleki school was um, commissioned in December, but we now have another one at Agege called the Vetland School, built of containers, uh, and um, that's an excellent one. You see, this is a green school, where we are not on the grid. We are using solar throughout. Every classroom has a smart whiteboard and tablets for, all the, for the students in the class. Sorry, I think there's a ratio of about one to two in each uh, classroom. And there too, we are building a track and field. We are building a basketball court because we can, after I learned moral, we knew that we couldn't go back and just build a school and just, uh, uh, open it, but we had to ensure that the school had all the structures that it needs for it to operate effectively. Another school that we are building in collaboration this time with uh, the wives of, uh, with, with, with some of our associations and support groups is a school in Ogombo where we have actually deliberately built um, 
a ramp from the ground floor to the top so that in a, it's a, it'll be an inclusive school where children, even those with um, physical the challenges, can get to the top on their wheelchair. And we've deliberately built toilets and so on so that they'll be able to effectively use these toilets. So again, we keep on thinking and improving on the existing model. It's not that we just build. And I think that is part of the beauty of what this administration has been trying to do. We take a lot of data in Lagos State. We work with data so that we just don't make decisions based on sentiment. So in collecting data about our students right from entry to exit, we found that there's a significant drop around GS3 to SS1 and SS2 to SS3. And this is because many of them have a need to work, to earn a living. They start earning a living or they start learning a craft with a, with a, a master, or as they call it. So we said, look, let's do something. Let them stay. We understand this need is very important. How do we address this need? So we set up what we call comprehensive schools. And the governor approved a pilot of 12 schools. So in 12 of our schools, we set up these schools. And these schools are running vocational pro pro programs within school. So that rather than leave school and start wandering the streets or looking for menial jobs here and there, come in, we will train you and give you really first class training. And that is what we have been doing. And so those teachers, uh, if you look at the board. I don't know if it, it's possible for you to look at the screen. But you see this screen in front of me. This is, what, this is why it is on all the time. Because it's the framework for the Comprehensive Schools Program. So apart from the fact that we will teach them vocational skills like our Greek, to ICT, fashion, building and construction and so on, we are also teaching them soft skills. And we know the teaching of soft skills like financial literacy, entrepreneurship and so on, is not something that is easy for teachers taught in a very formal setting. So we, we too entered into a relationship with a city called Tampere in Finland. I know the Finland is well known for the quality of its schools. What people don't understand is that their vocational schools are also excellent. But their methodologies of teaching, the pedagogy of the, of the classroom is really exciting. And the students learn and you see the joy of teaching and learning. So we sent our teachers there to learn from them, to study them in the classroom, to, to absorb the atmosphere and learn the skills by which they will teach these children all these soft subjects. They are not teaching physics, chemistry and so on. It's a totally different ball game. So you, you have to give them the skills. And that's what, well, that was why we sent them to Finland. And they came back really enthusiastic. And they've hit the growth run. If you go to any of those classrooms, they are teaching collaboratively. They are using technology to teach. They are creative. They are innovat innovative. They are solving problems. They are planning and so on. And so from there, they'll be able to do things like set up their own businesses very quickly in addition to learning the skills that they want to learn. Every child has a chance to have a marketable skill. When they leave us, like for instance, um, let, me, let me pick one of them. Like I said, it's on the board. The framework is on this screen in front of me. So let's say I pick something like um, a child does um, fishery. He's not going to do it at uh, a very basic level. He'll do it at the best possible level, taught by the teachers who went to Finland. So he'll do fishery. And we are doing this in, um, in collaboration with technical partners. Uh, this, in this case, it's IIT who we are working with, as well as our own Greek teachers. So we do fisheries, and apart from fisheries, the student will do financial literacy, understand how to plan for themselves financially. They'll do entrepreneurship and employability. They'll be able to set up the business, write a proposal, write a letter to the bank, ask some money from the bank. We'll teach them personal leadership skills. We'll work on their communication, presentation skills, public speaking. Even dressing and etiquette. Can you imagine somebody comes to you and says, oh, I'm a plumber, and the person just starts speaking, and you, you see, this is a neat, smart, clever person who writes his uh, invoice, writes, or uh, asks for a loan in the bank, will give them digital literacy skills, soft, and each one of them has a tablet on which we've loaded these soft skills. These soft skills are not skills you teach in the class per se, like lessons. They, they, they are going to self-pace themselves and we are working with a, a, fin a, a Finnish company called Fonzai, and they are following up to ensure that the students are learning all along. So by the time they are done, as someone says, I came out of Lagos State, and I'm, 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 I'm an expert in photography and videography, you will know that this is an excellent person. 
What we've asked them, and some of them have given us, their, they've shared their curriculum with us. They've trained our teachers on how to teach these subjects. Some have provided internship opportunities, even work opportunities at the end. The internship opportunities, for some, it includes a small uh, stipend. And, and so we're working with professional bodies, with NGOs, international organizations. It's a whole, it's, I, I think it's a great way of, uh, it's a great, um, what can I call it, case study for government collaborating openly, transparently with the private sector and allowing the private sector to drive certain things. Like the entrepreneurship and employability is by an NGO called Junior Achievement. And they are going to set up companies and they started doing that. What they are doing, they are designing their Legos, naming their company. So let's say all of us are learning makeover, barbering, hairdressing, makeup. Then we set up our company and we start working. Because like I said, we want them to earn an income early. So it's a practical, hands-on way of learning that will give them a, skill, a lifelong skill. We have to do a lot of uh, stakeholder uh, management because we have to let them know that it doesn't mean the child is not intelligent. It, intelligence is something that is multifaceted. Some people are good at English and so on. Some people are good at drawing. They're, they're, that's their uh, intelligence. There's, there's this uh, Howard Gardner's uh, mo uh, um, theory of multiple intelligences. And that's what we base this on, that look, people have multiple intelligences. What if my intelligence is with my hands? What if I'm a great fashion designer? I don't have to know physics to be a great fashion designer. So we talked a lot, and, and the interesting thing about those schools, because we are only doing it in 12 schools now, though Mr. Governor has challenged us to go for 50 by September. You see, in those 12 schools, whenever they, you go around and talk to the head of school, they say, oh, school is very quiet. Because those children who were bored, who did not enjoy normal class, they are having a great time. And don't forget that the methodology of teaching is so interesting and engaging. That they are learning a lot. I think it's a great one. I would, I would allow my child to learn this. And so something like this um, comprehensive school system is to ensure that they have the skills that the private sector needs. I assure you that all of the uh, skills that we are teaching them, we are not doing it in the normal, didactic, uh, theoretical manner, no. And we came up with a curriculum together with pr pr private associations. Like plumbers told us, this is what we want a plumber to know. Um, Fashion designers told us, this is what we want a fashion designer to know. So all these things are taught practically. And so this is our own first step towards ensuring that people who leave this system do have the essential skills of success in the world they are going to live in. The meaning of EcoExcel is excellence in children's education. And this program was introduced in order to improve teaching and learning in primary schools. What we've done is that um, working with technical partners, we reviewed our schemes of work. It's our own scheme of work, not anybody else's. And we put it on tablets for our teachers. So really, our teachers don't have to do much work with writing lesson notes. But if they read it up, they study it well, week in, week out, they, they, the way they'll teach was seriously improved because we included exercises, teamwork, collaboration, all those things we talk about as being 21st century skills. So that's what we've been doing with EcoExcel. There, it's, it's going on in all our classrooms. All the teachers have tablets with which um, we've, we support their teaching in the classroom. It's not meant to, to be read from directly. It's meant to support and improve their engagement of the learners in the classroom. It's meant to give them examples of exercises that you can do and so on and so forth. So it's really in place and we've um, done a monitoring and evaluation of it and found that the literacy levels are very high. The children are actually reading from primary one, which was the objective. I mean, children can read across all levels. They should read in primary one. Age appropriate, I mean, you know, you're not expecting them to be reading long, long words, but by primary one, they should be able to read well. So that by six, they are fluent readers. And that was the main objective. And of course, that they are good in numeracy as well. Thank you so much, Honorable Commissioner for Education, for your time with us today on the Greater Lagos Vision. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That's all we have for you in this episode of the Greater Lagos Vision on Plus TV Africa. I'm Lovikuku Oyedoku. Bye for now.